The Juniper Tree Adapted from the story by Jacob and Wilm Grimm Once upon a time, there was a kind, wealthy, and altogether lovely couple. The wife desired children, but pray as she may, none came. One day, as she was praying in the courtyard, peeling an apple, she cut her finger and blood trickled onto the snow. Seeing the blood on the snow, a vision of a boy came to her. One with skin like the snow, and blood as red as hers. The winter passed, and the wife began to doubt that she would ever give birth. Eight months passed, and she told her husband that if she were to die, to bury her beneath the juniper tree, for that is where she had the vision of her child. But when the spring came, the woman gave birth to a boy, just like the one she had seen in her vision. The wife became so full of joy that she died from the shock, and her husband, overcome with sorrow, buried her underneath the juniper tree. The husband remarries, and his second wife gives birth to a girl, Marlene. At first, his second wife seems kind, but as the years pass, she becomes wicked. When the second wife realizes that the son of her husband would be the inheritor of her husband's wealth, well, she becomes jealous and begins to hate the boy. She yells at him like a servant and slaps him around constantly. One day, she gave her daughter Marlene an apple. Marlene thanked her and smiled, and seeing that her stepbrother was hungry, she asked if he were not to have one as well. Of course, she said to her daughter, and she invited the boy to pick an apple from her chest. As the boy was looking over the apples, leaning into the chest, the second wife had a cruel thought and slammed the lid of the chest on the boy, decapitating him. The second wife panicked and bandaged the boy's head back onto his body. Marlene saw the boy standing still and asked him if he enjoyed his apple. When he did not answer, she hit him on the head which caused his head to fall off. The girl panicked and told her mother what had happened, in between sobs and tears. Her mother scolded her but said that they mustn't tell father. The second wife then proceeded to cook the boy into a stew to hide his disappearance. The stew did not need any salt, for Marlene cried so much. When the father came home and they sat down to dinner, his wife said that the boy was out with his uncle. His father was upset but not overly worried as he sat and enjoyed the stew. Marlene, still distraught, took the bones of the boy and buried them underneath the juniper tree. As she laid them there, her grief and sorrow disappeared. As the girl went back into her house, the juniper tree began to shake and move and a bird flew away from the tree and, finding a goldsmith, the bird began to sing. The goldsmith told the bird that its song was beautiful and that he would like to hear more. The bird said that he would sing if the man traded his gold chain. The bird sings its song of sorrow again to a shoemaker and trades his song for shoes, and then again to a miller who trades the song for a millstone. The bird then flies away back to the house of the rich man, his wife, and Marlene. The three are eating dinner when they hear a bird singing outside. The wife feels terrified suddenly and stays away while the father and Marlene go to see the beautiful bird and listen to its song. The father looks up and as he does so a gold chain falls around his neck. Marlene looks up and as she does some beautiful shoes fall to her feet. The wife sees this and begins to wonder, what does that bird have for me? And so she runs outside, looks up to the sky, and as she does, a millstone falls from the sky and kills her. The husband and Marlene look over to where his second wife was, but see only smoke and fire and no body. Realizing that she was a terrible person, the two begin to dance underneath the juniper tree, and they live happily ever after. <laughs>